Okay, this is a question that I have never openly talked about and something that a lot of people have brought to my attention and criticized me for. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today, I will be talking to one of your favorite content creators, Linda Sun, as part of my new series, Well Fed and Fed Up. Here, we're gonna be talking about diet culture, body image, mental health, and so much more. Every episode, I'm gonna be sitting down with a fellow influencer or content creator to ask some really tough questions and have some real, uncensored, unscripted discussions without the shame and judgment because we're all a little fed up with wellness culture, right? Now, before we dive in, a quick reminder to check out my disclaimer, including a trigger warning uh, to those with past or previous experiences with disordered eating. I also wanna remind you guys to subscribe to the channel and ring that little bell so that you never miss out on an episode. Hey, Linda, thank you so much for joining me today. I am really excited to be chatting with you. Me too. Thank you for having me, Abby. It's an honor. <laughs> so first and foremost, for those who might not know you well, who is Linda Sutton? I am a 20 year old university student who's always just had a passion for food and eating and baking and exercising. And I'd say I'm just a pretty normal average girl who's still on her journey of building and molding her relationship with food and exercise and her body and self-confidence, just like any other 20 year old probably is. The only difference is uh, I film it and I document it for a couple people to watch. My videos are kind of all about like enjoying food, enjoying life and sharing my own experiences and things I've learned along my journey, but honestly, what I want others to think of when they think of Linda Sun is just pancakes, popcorners, lots of peanut butter, and like a sweaty hot mess, basically. I love that. I love just being, you know, known for popcorn and things like that. That's amazing. Um, now, of course, we want to dive into some more sensitive topics. And I know that the past few weeks and months have been intense to say the least. So how have you been feeling when the cameras are off? My platform and this community that we've built and that continues to grow every day has been a space where I can be myself or I can be vulnerable and I can be honest with who I am and what I think. But yeah, so over the past few months, I have been sucked into a, the darker side of YouTube, I guess you could say. The side where I don't think any YouTuber wants to be sucked into. <laughs> and everything positive and kind and encouraging kind of just turned into hatefulness and body shaming. I no longer felt like this was my safe space anymore, you know? I didn't really know how to handle the hate I was getting for just being me. So yeah, it's been a couple of long months of me just doing a lot of self-reflecting and trying to understand how I feel. Because when the cameras are off, I've honestly just been a little bit confused and a little bit lost. And I honestly think that's totally fine. You don't always have to know the answer to everything or be okay with everything or even understand what you're feeling in the moment. Okay, so let's talk about the video that made a little bit of uproar on YouTube about having your calories for a week. Now, I know that you really aim to eat intuitively and are really not about denial or restriction. So I'm curious, what was the thinking behind that challenge? Yeah, if I'm gonna be honest, I have tried to block that time and that video out of my memory completely. But going into making that video, I already knew it was gonna be a controversial one. But I didn't anticipate how extreme the controversy would be and definitely did not expect the certain lengths that certain people would take that video to. The people who've actually watched my videos know that I've been through quite a complicated relationship with food and I've come a long way. And that does not mean my relationship with food is perfect in any way, it's far from it. And I'm still learning and growing and figuring it out along the way. And I would never ever promote or encourage restraint restriction, drastically cutting calories, forbidden foods. That's just not what I'm about. And people that actually watch my videos would know that. I know that. And that was not the message I was trying to get across. I think the point of the video, there was a personal side and there was also a trying to prove a larger point side. I actually was curious and wanted to see what would happen to my hunger and my mood and my cravings if I were to cut my calories drastically because I knew nothing good was gonna come out of this experiment and I wanted to show that to my audience. I thought I made it pretty clear that I wasn't trying to promote restriction because I'm always saying like, you do you, like, do what makes you feel like the best version of you, the healthiest version of you, if that's counting every calorie, if that's intuitive eating, following any diet, eating right before bed, whatever it is, I'm always advocating for people to do what's best for their bodies and their lives. I think people didn't really see that, or maybe I could have been clearer or said it better, or they thought I was blaming calorie counting for my problems, I don't really know, but definitely, yeah, was not my intention to offend anyone. 
Yeah, I, I could say the same thing about so many of my videos where I'm like, I, you know, I provide a disclaimer at one point and, and I didn't later on in the video and people will call me out for that, not really maybe watching the whole thing or not seeing the context or the greater picture. It is so hard to try to be, you know, a, a content creator and make everybody happy. You just can't. So I, I'm glad to hear that you're trying to kind of come to terms with that because I think that's so important for mental health. Um, now, you did turn off the comment section on that video. Was that done in part because of the public reaction from your audience, or do you feel that kind of reactions from other creators sent a wave of unnecessary targeted attacks on you? I used to love the comment section of my videos. I still do. It, it brings me so much joy and it empowers me to see everyone supporting each other and encouraging each other and honestly like hyping each other up. Like you guys like are incredible. And I think that video changed everything for me. There were a lot of great comments, really kind comments, but because I think the message of the video was misconstrued, and I also think we're so easily influenced by other people and their opinions and their comments, and so when someone takes time out of their day to construct a long hate comment or video about me, I'm not surprised that the hate started to overpower the kind comments. So did I feel attacked? <laughs> Kind of, you know, like I feel like who wouldn't? Do I think that people decided to hate on me and my channel and my content before trying to understand me or my message or my audience? Yes. But do I think people are entitled to their own opinions? Of course. And unfortunately, what I've realized is hate is always going to exist. It doesn't matter how pure your intentions are, but I can't know or control what other people are gonna think or comment. I just had to kind of step back and realize not everyone's going to like me or agree with what I stand for. And I have to be okay with that. Yeah, I know it's such a hard realization to come to, but I also think important for our mental health as creators. Um, but what was your first reaction when you started to see some of that criticism and all the response videos and things like that. Like, you know, as a fellow content creator who have had many people create response videos to me, because I also create response videos, I know that that can feel like a lot. So I'm curious how you dealt with that. Okay, the way I like to see my channel, my platform, and the entire purpose of just what I do is just to spread positivity and love. And for a long, long time, it was such a positive space for me and for others. A place, like I mentioned before, was just safe. And yeah, hate and criticism, you know, constructive or not, is it's just a part of being a content creator. But because I've never gotten so much criticism and so much hate for what I do and who I am, and because I'm still quite new to the whole YouTube environment, like I only started a little over a year ago, I was quite shocked. I felt overshadowed and I felt silenced. I felt like I didn't have a place or the right to fight for myself, to stand up for myself. I kind of felt really hopeless for a really long time. But after, you know, being able to reflect on the comments and the hate, I feel like it was a really, really necessary learning experience for me. And I'm not gonna sit here and lie and say that it didn't hurt me because reading thousands upon thousands of hateful comments about me. It's not something that I particularly like to spend my free time doing, but getting through that time in my life and having to experience all the hateful comments on YouTube and the aggressive DMs on Instagram and the hateful videos made about me, it just made me stronger. And it was hard at first, but everything seems difficult before you go through it, you know? And looking back at the video, do you regret like the process or specific things that you said or did or making the video in general? Like are there things that you would have changed in retrospect? Uh, yeah, I've thought about this quite a lot. Like my life maybe just would have been so much easier if I just didn't make such a controversial video, but I don't think I regret it. I mean, I've been thinking about making this video for quite a long time and I probably would have ended up making it sooner or later. And to be honest, I was proud of that video. I'm, I'm still proud of that video. And I think I got the message I wanted to get across to the people who I think needed to see that video. What I don't think people realize sometimes is that I am just a person. I'm just human. Like, I'm gonna be making mistakes and I'm gonna say the wrong things. And for me, like that video was just a way for me to say that you are deserving of fullness and eating and fueling your body. It really wasn't meant to do any harm to anyone. And if people are gonna take that video and define me through it, go ahead, that's okay. I really do apologize though to the people that may have been offended by that video, but no, I, I don't regret it. Yeah. I mean, the reality is the public needs to realize that content creators are not, 
you know, we're not above making mistakes. Even I'm a professional, I have a degree, I am, um, you know, like this is my job and yet I still make mistakes. People call me out like, oh my gosh, she must know nothing because she made a small error. You know what? We're human. Like there is so much going on. I'm juggling a lot of things. We are all subject to mistakes. And I think as long as you um, are, you know, transparent about that, you are willing to learn from your mistakes. I think that says a lot about, um, you know, your personality and who you are professionally. And also just like how much you care for your audience in general. So, I mean, nobody is above like making mistakes and we all don't know everything so i think the public just needs to needs to figure that one out okay so i want to talk about uh your most recent video at the time of filming this so you mentioned gaining 20 pounds and learning to love your body after having you know a history of having a more complicated relationship with food so obviously a lot of my followers are in the same camp right now especially with covid is there a mantra that you use to help reassure you and your trust in your body and just your general intuitive eating approach. Yeah, change is never easy, especially when it comes to, you know, your own body. But I came across this like reel or something the other day that summarizes exactly what I tell myself in a much better way. And whenever I'm feeling out of tune with my body, I always tell myself something like this. It, w it went something like, the entire purpose of your body is not to display it to the world. It's, it's not just for others to see. Your body carries you through life and keeps you alive and lets you experience the world. It needs nourishment and it needs love and it needs compassion. The point of your body is not to look perfect, it's not to be a certain weight, it's not to be a certain size. So you just gotta cut your body some slack and say thank you. Especially like after weight gain, like I find myself constantly telling myself, you are worthy of food at every freaking size, okay? As cliche as it is, I always tell myself, Life's just too short. It's too short to ruin, you know, beautiful summer days and nights out with friends and celebrations because you're too stressed out about a couple of extra pounds. It's too short to be so upset when you could just be enjoying life. And it's just too short for me to be constantly at war with my own body. So yeah, that's kind of what I tell myself when I'm having one of those bad days. Yeah, I really, I really appreciate that. And you know, we all go through seasons of life where we feel more or less comfortable in our own skin. And you know, myself being a second time mom, you know, I'm still in the kind of postpartum phase of life. And um, you know, I, I think I'm in the best place of my, even though like I'm like probably like the heaviest I've ever been, um, I'm in the best place ever in terms of my, just my like my mentality around my body because I've just been able to witness like, holy sh look at what it does and then also like you said like life is too short I you know it's summertime I remind myself one of my friends posted on Instagram you only get 18 summers with your kids like put that into perspective and I it makes you think like I only have 18 like these are counting down I can't waste a single day thinking like worrying about not you know about having the ice cream or not having the ice cream like I'm just gonna have to ice cream because I want my kids to see me enjoying that experience with them so yeah I think that thinking of, of things in in terms like that really does put it into perspective um, because honestly you know you want to feel good you want to you know fuel your body with great nutrition and that's important and I think you you really demonstrate that beautifully in your in your videos how you can balance um, a lot of nutritious and nutrient-dense foods with pleasure and enjoyment and experience around food. Um, and I think that's a really important um, piece of, of finding health and happiness. So I think you do a great job at showcasing that. Now let's talk about some of your content in general because clearly I'm a big fan um, and I binge watch a lot of your content and I think it's beautifully shot and amazingly edited um, and also just so inspirational and fun so i'm curious about your strategy just as a fellow content creator with clickbait because i noticed you put a lot of pictures of like your body in the thumbnails and there's a lot of talk about weight gain or weight loss in the titles but your actual content seems to communicate a more body neutral kind of food freedom approach so I'm curious what your thinking is on this and, and like how do you personally reconcile these competing strategies and messages with your content? Okay, this is a question that I have never openly talked about and something that a lot of people have brought to my attention. 
and criticize me for. <laughs> Call me disingenuous and fake and insincere and I, I get it. And I'm honestly not gonna argue and say it's not clickbait because it is. But if you've seen my content, you're right. The message the thumbnail portrays and the actual message the video sends are literally completely contrasting ideas. I think the reason I do what I do is because that helps me reach the audience that I think I need to reach. I think it's because when I was younger, I was obsessed with watching videos titled the same way that I titled my videos. How to lose weight fast, how to lose fat from here and there. I watched every single what I eat in a week to compare and contrast, see what I should or should not eat to look like them. And that's just such a toxic community to grow up in and such a terrible message being sent to people. Like, I don't think any YouTuber told me that I was okay just as me. And I think that really took a toll on the way I perceive my body and impacted my self-confidence and relationship with food till this very day. So I want to be that person I wish I had when I was younger. And I want to be there for the people who are like me from my past, searching through all these videos, comparing and contrasting and tell them that you are strong and you are enough and you are beautiful just as you are. And there's so much more to life than the pressure you put on yourself to look a certain way. There's way more to life than restriction. That food is a part of life and not all of life and that a healthy relationship with food and exercise and themselves is so possible. And while I do not have the most perfect relationship with any of those things, I have come a long way and I do wanna share what I've learned with as many people as possible. And I think the best way to do that is how I'm doing it right now. If you hate that, I'm sorry, but you don't have to watch. That's just me. Yeah, I mean, I get some of the same feedback sometimes. It's like, I remember uh, like creating videos and things like that being like, how to detox your body. And like, when you actually watch it, you're like, oh, you just need a lo some lungs. You need to like take a and like go, go to the bathroom. But it's like, you're trying to, to reach the people who need this message most because those are the people who are searching for some of these like wellness pseudoscience, like diet culture messages. Um, and you're coming in there with the truth, with the truth bombs. So yeah, it's obviously a strategy and this is YouTube. So you have to expect that everything is a little sensationalized. Um, that's, that's what gets people to, to watch your content. And I think as long as what you are communicating in that content is legit, and it is in my opinion, in your case, and in my case, um, then I think that, that that's a totally fair, um, uh, fair, fair way to, to structure your content. So it's a great strategy in my opinion, but I get, I get the criticism, I get it too, um, but that's just also my opinion as a fellow creator. Now, you are still somewhat new to the crazy YouTube troll world, uh, but clearly you've had to catch up pretty quick because your influence is huge. Um, but a lot of people don't realize how much of a toll this all can take on us content creators. Um, I actually hear from a lot of content creators constantly how emotionally taxing it all is and that you know burnout is really real. So I'm curious, how do you deal with the criticism or the trolling in general? How do you how do you get past that? And I'm still new to this whole world and still confused about how I feel about everything because I am the luckiest person in the world. I am so, so grateful that I have this opportunity to connect to so many people and none of it, literally none of it feels real ever. I can't even process it right now. Like talking to you, like I can't process it. It all feels very, very, very just surreal. With that being said, knowing that I'm so, so, so forever grateful for everything that's come into my life, sometimes I feel like I'm just never going to be enough or be able to say the right thing. I can never do the right thing. And you're right, burnout is so freaking real. And I'm not even just burnt out. I think I'm burnt and scared. I'm scared to say the wrong thing because there's no right thing to say sometimes because <laughs> Everyone has such a different opinion. And the last thing I wanna do is offend anyone. And the only way I'm not gonna offend anyone is if I keep my mouth shut. And I think that's what hurts the most. <laughs> I'm scared because everything I do is wrong. However, I love YouTube and just because I'm scared doesn't mean I'm gonna quit. So what I've been doing to, you know, deal with it is really just reminding myself like what real life actually is. Surrounding myself with people that support me and ground me in real life. I surround myself with people that see me for more than just the videos I make and the mistakes I make and the brands I work with. I don't look at numbers anymore. I don't care for views. I'm just trying to find joy 
and creating and posting the things that I'm proud of and trying not to put too much pressure on myself to be perfect because someone is always gonna have something bad to say and I just can't control that. So I just focus on what I can control and try to be kind to myself and do what I feel is right because at the end of the day, you know, that's kind of all I can really do, so. Yeah, um, I, I could have said everything that you just said and more and it's like, there is always going to be somebody who's offended by your content. I mean, as an example, I remember I got feedback once because I used the, you know, the pronoun like she or her or woman in regards to talking about, you know, menstruation. And so in future videos, I tried to be more inclusive and use like more kind of inclusive language saying like people who menstruate. And then I got criticism by being like too politically correct or, or saying something that's stupid or doesn't make sense to them. So you really can't, you can't please everyone. I think that's the bottom line. And you just have to like accept that like someone's going to be mad about something all the time. And if you can't accept that, like you really are not going to be able to, to, to move forward in this, in this space because it's just, it's nonstop hate. Yeah. So I, I totally feel you on that one. But I'm curious, has any of this criticism changed like your content planning or your approach to videos? Um, are you like now finding yourself having to think more about the unintended interpretations with your audience? Or are you mainly just like thinking about entertainment value and like what you wanna put out there? I am scared to post controversial content. I'm genuinely afraid and anxious before I post videos, when I'm editing, when I'm thinking about what to say and the message I'm trying to send. The criticism was good. It, it taught me a lot, but it has definitely taken a toll on me and the content I make. And it's kind of made me feel unwelcome in the space that I created with the intention of trying to make everyone feel as welcome as possible. And it's kind of sad that this is the space I now feel unwelcome in. Yeah, I just realized I have to be more careful with what I say, with the words I choose to use, with my disclaimers and trigger warnings, and I have to be careful with the topics I choose to speak on. Basically, I just, I just feel like I'm walking on eggshells all the time, and it was never like that before the hate and the criticism got more intense. But as I said, like, I am stronger and I'm trying to learn from it. And hate is always gonna be around us. And I realize it's on me to let that hate affect me and bring me down or for me to like rise above it and carry on. Over time, I hope I can go back to how I used to be and like be a little bit more carefree and like not be afraid to speak my mind. Yeah, I went through phases myself where after like a first heavy wave of criticism, not unlike what you experienced, I really felt the need to like scrutinize every word, every sentence, like lots of disclaimers, like super politically correct. And then I was like, this is so exhausting. It's no longer enjoyable for me to be a content creator because I felt like every sentence that I had to say had to be prefaced with like 10 previous sentences to just like create context. And that's challenging. So I have been able to try to, I have been trying to find a balance of what disclaimers are necessary and what are people just going to have to be responsible for themselves. You know, I, I can't, I can't hold everyone's hand through every single trigger because even things that I don't think about, there's going to be somebody who is offended by something I say or do. So. It has been a real learning opportunity. I think in general, I'm a pretty sensitive person just by nature. So this does come naturally to me to, to think more empathetically and more sensitively to others, but it definitely can kind of take it to an extreme where it becomes really unenjoyable for me and also feels like I'm watering down a message. So yeah, I totally feel you on that. But um, as a dietitian, you know, like my content, I often think about my content as kind of like infotainment. So evidence informed and educational, but still wrapped up in like an entertaining way. So how do you see the purpose of your content? And I'm also curious how, if at all, do you believe that it can be utilized to like improve people's relationship with food? I never craft my videos or created my channel with the intention of educating people or think that I had the right or the qualifications to tell people how to eat or exercise or live their lives. As I've been saying, I'm a student, I'm 20, I don't have a degree, I'm in school, I'm not a professional. And I literally sound like my disclaimer blurb right now, but anyways, for every video I make, I make it thinking I'm more of a lifestyle YouTuber but my videos are focused on topics about food and body image and self-confidence and fitness. I've never seen myself 
being a health or fitness YouTuber or a wellness YouTuber. I'm just me. I vlog my life, I edit, and I eat a lot of food. And I never thought that I could help people. But after sharing my thoughts around food and exercise, and after sharing my story and how I listen to my body and seeing me as just like a typical average girl, I think it gives people hope, or at least I hope it does, because if you were to tell me that I'd be here with my relationship with food and my body before, I would never believe you. Honestly, with my channel, I just want to give people a little bit of hope, happiness, positive vibes, leave my channel feeling something or a little bit better about themselves. It has never been my intention to teach or educate or change lives or act like I know more than anyone because I'm honestly just sharing as like a friend my own experiences and thoughts and my mistakes and lessons I've learned along the way and that's all I just want to be a friend. I love that. We all need friends on this journey. So uh, what are you totally fed up with in the wellness community? Because I got a lot of things I'm fed up about, but I'm curious what's 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 pissing you off. <laughs> I don't even want to get into it because there's just so much controversy surrounding the wellness community. Even though it's such a welcoming community and accepting community, like for some reason we're not doing a very good job of accepting everyone. I think the biggest thing for me is like I feel like I'm not allowed to want to change. Like I can want to change and still love myself. And I can still be an advocate for body love and acceptance. Like health is so different for everyone. I'm tired of people thinking that there's only like one right way. Also, it's my body. It's my choice to do whatever I want with it and eat whatever I want and move it the way I want. And I'm sick of people telling me that the right way for me is wrong. Like, What does that even mean? Someone always has something bad to say. There are so many opinions. Health has just become, you know, so complicated. And you know, there's good and bad to that. But sometimes, you know, I just, want to live my life. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely like a lot of gatekeeping around certain terms and 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 I think that a lot of people feel like they can't respect their body or love their body while also desiring to change their body. And you know, I've grappled with this for a really long time. I've got a whole video about where I am in this whole haze versus weight loss continuum. And I think for me, it's come down to acknowledging that I believe in body autonomy. I believe that everybody has a right to want to change their body. And it makes sense in such, you know, a body focused, fat phobic world that we're in, diet culture obsessed world we're living in. Even if you love your body and respect your body, I mean, it makes sense that some days you just want to change it. So I'm, I'm kind of in the camp of body neutrality um, and really focusing more on respecting your body rather than kind of obsessively loving it every single day. I'm not sure that that's like a realistic place for most people to, to be in. And I don't think that it means that, you know, you can't be a supporter of intuitive eating or you can't be a supporter of body positivity or that community if you don't um, love your body 24 seven. So yeah, I, I feel you on that too. Now, final question. What do you want my community to know about your message? Like who does it serve best? Who is it safe for? And who is it maybe not safe for? Okay, uh, first of all, I just wanna say, Abby, I'm just so glad that you're on this platform. You are a channel that I think we need in this time, in this day and age. You have helped millions of people and taught me so much. So yeah, I just wanted to thank you for everything that you do. <laughs> for me, I'm not qualified, I'm not a dietitian, I'm not a professional. So if you're looking for a channel with, you know, science-backed professional educational content, I'm sorry, I don't think I'm your girl. I think I'm just trying to send good vibes, encourage self-love and body acceptance. And I just wanna share the changes in my life and the changes in my mindset that have made accepting my body possible. And I wanna share that with people in the hopes that it can maybe help them find peace with their bodies and their relationship with food, the way it did with mine. I kinda of want it to seem like I'm with you along this journey, like we're doing it together, just me and you, with a lot of amazing food, a few inspirational quotes, a little too much peanut butter, and just acceptance all around. So yeah, that's who I am, that's my channel, and I know it's not for everyone, but I want you to know you're always welcome to pay a visit whenever. Amazing. And yeah, everybody should be paying a visit. So thank you so much, Linda. This was so amazing. Um, of course, I'm going to be linking to Linda's channel below. Um, but again, so happy that you were able to come on to chat. Thanks for having me, Abby. Bye, guys. <laughs>
and thank all of you guys for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below on who you'd like to see me review next in my Fed Up series. Subscribe to the channel and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.